Hey, Internet! It's Paul. It's Matt! The Dork Lords. We are here today talking about episodes three and four of the new Netflix show Dead Boy Detectives. The episode's entitled The Case of the Devlin House and The Case of the Lighthouse Leapers. We open episode three with our heroes interviewing prospective ghost clients. Most seem trivial or irrelevant, but one case piques their interest, the Devlin family murders. Years ago, Mr. Devlin murdered his family with an ax, then shot himself. However, screams are still being heard in the house in the present day, hence the case of the Devlin house. We end <clears throat> episode four with Edwin and Nico watching Scooby-Doo episodes Nico is inspired by how much Crystal missed her mother, and so she decides to read the as-yet-unopened letters from her mom. Uh, they're written in Japanese, but Reddit has supposedly translated the top letter. If so, it's fairly innocent stuff. It starts with, To Nico, how are you doing? Have you gotten used to school life yet? I wonder if you've made any friends. How's the food in America? I've heard it's not that good. And so on and so on. So mm. it's... Basically, you know, just, hey, mom sure, sending sure, thoughts. Sure. Yeah, not like that uh, manga she was talking about. Right, exactly. Um, so in the room across the hall, Charles kisses Crystal. She asks if he feels it. He says no, but it doesn't matter. And so they continue making out. Roll credits. All that said, Paul. Yes. What'd you think of episodes three and four? of Dead Boy Detectives. So, um, yeah, certainly improvement on the uh, first couple of episodes, even though Agreed. it's only a bit of an improvement. I mean, okay. there's still, I think that it's still sort of a, a level of um, light fare. Of course, they're wise to compare themselves to Scooby-Doo. Uh, <laughs> you know, it's a procedural, but it's, you know, sort of a magical, supernatural uh, procedural in the same way the supernatural show was before he claimed without it really having ever watched that show very much at all um yeah i mean i feel like the emotional moments are good enough um you know i wish they were bring a little more art to it still but you know it's fine so seven okay yeah, I th I'm going to go a little high. I would go, since I gave a 7 to episodes 1 and 2, I'm going to jump yeah, so this you're up you're chronicling o overrating. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. Well said, Paul. Um, as well, once I start at a spot, then I can't, oh, God, if this is better, it has to be. Yeah, oh, yeah. God. <laughs> I do feel like the comedic elements uh, took a little bit of a backseat for these two episodes. Yes, you still get the wisecracking cats and the dandelion spirits. And maybe my favorite character so far, Mick. Tragic Mick, the walrus magic shop owner. <laughs> yeah. Um, but um, episode three featured a visceral, gruesome axe murder played out over and over again. Uh, and episode four featured Charles being beaten by his father as a child. He got this child abuse angle. So there were some pretty serious themes, uh, you know, being displayed in this. So I do feel like there was some gravitas in the middle of these scenes. Sure. Yeah, a bit of gravitas, yeah, because you were dealing with Charles's uh, trauma. So, you know, they wanted to treat that, uh, you know, and they're trying to show you more of what's going on with these individual characters. So, yeah, I mean, they're, you know, giving more respect to the drama, and that stuff is important, you know, even though I yeah. wish they were handling it better. It's still, yeah. you know, it's still good that they're spending time with it. Um, yeah, they do still feel the need to kind of over-explain what's going on yeah. a little bit with the awkward yeah. dialogue. Yeah. It does seem yeah. a little more contained than it was in episode one, but they're still like, okay, you don't, have to, you don't have to tell us. That's fine. We got it. I did think the pacing of episode three was really cool. Mm. I, I liked the conceit of the haunted house. The, yeah, that was the, good. You hear, yes, spool up, owner of a lonely heart. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. You get this recurring series of visual and audio cues that tell you where you are in this horror scene. Oh, yeah. he's coming down the stairs. Oh, he's killing the family. Oh, he's going back upstairs to shoot himself. Oh, we're restarting. Like, all that stuff happening. Yeah, Meanwhile, yeah, yeah, the yeah, characters yeah, are talking. Yeah, yeah. I thought that was really effective. 
Um, yeah, and I liked yeah. the plot twist of Charles being so affected by the trauma from his own past that he becomes mm. part of the loop. I thought that was mm. pretty cool, too. So, mm. fun storytelling. Yeah, that, that was good, yeah. I give it credit. Now, were you satisfied with how that resolved, though? Well, they had the extra creature, right? The creature that was feeding off of... The reason it was in the loop, I guess. Or was it... Is that No, the thing? I'm not sure oh. that, that it was related. I think it's just like, oh, there's so much trauma there that a, you know... Oh, it a attracted was... a creature. Yeah, okay. yeah, which... Uh, uh, actually didn't seem like it was related to me and so okay. I think that they could have left it out um, but Good no point. that's not the part of, that actually is not oh. the you know I mean the reckoning is what I'm talking about for all those for those characters I mean it's like okay they're free so they can you know they go to the bureaucracy and, of the afterlife yeah 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 and it seems like only two of the three went to the bureaucracy that's true oh I think that because they showed the red room, right? When so, I think the idea is that the dad went to hell. Yeah, but there's four of them. Oh, good point. Yeah, no, that's a good point. Why wasn't there another? What happened to the? That's another story, yeah, yeah, yeah. Paul. <laughs> yeah, uh, but you know, you didn't see the uh, the the you know the the evil one being just sort of happened in a light. You saw. Yeah, I was okay with it. I mean, like in other words. Oh look, death is dealing with them, and there's a whole thing of their, you know, they're trying to escape death. So mm. Mm. that's true. That's right. Yeah, I, that makes sense that they would run away. Yeah, and I guess yeah, um, since they probably only had that actress or whatever for the yeah uh, for the first one episode. <laughs> so we've got this night nurse plot line, and that's where right. they, oh the afterlife bureaucracy, and they come down, and she's in the what the afterlife lost and found department, right. And is she gone? Right, a great question. I was going to ask the same question. I don't. I would say no because she. I yeah, think she's I would functionally too. Since immortal, she's already dead. Right? Yeah. Yeah. But uh, she does get kicked into the giant angler fish. Um, but so she's obviously you know she tortures people and ghosts. Yes. And uh, she tortures Charles, who then kicks her into the angler fish, and everybody's really like, "Oh, that was extreme, Charles." And again, I guess if it killed her, yes. But I feel like <laughs> I think it was just a way to like keep her from taking them to the afterlife. So it's, anyway, but yeah, if it was permanent, then whoa, okay, yeah, you, you killed her. But I don't think she, I don't think he did. But personally, I'm not as big a fan of that plot line. I find it much more compelling that they're running from death. And that the death that we're presented with is not a sinister sadist. Blah, 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 blah. It's just like somebody who's basically like empathetically inevitable. Like I'm death, and yep, you got to come with me. Well, they that, certainly have an established, and I'm not. I uh, wonder if the original text does a good job of doing it actually. But what's the difference between death coming along and the night nurse saying you got to go to the places yeah, you're supposed to be? Well, it, I mean, it seems like they're functioning in the same way. Like, oh, we got to yeah. avoid. So, in my mind, if I were to choose one of those two uh, antagonists, I would go with death. And just go, eh, I don't think... Do we need the bureaucratic afterlife? Eh. I don't know that it's adding a lot to the story. I would much rather... As you said, I mean, the fact that they don't have... Yeah, the, I think that's the main part of it, that they don't yeah. have that... Yeah, they don't know, have the actress. Or you know, and they didn't establish, even in um, uh, Sandman, that she's a part of... You know, <laughs> her part of death... Is a just fine, nice part of death. You have to go along <laughs> to niceness, and this is not that. It's uh, you know. So oh, I, and I'd be surprised. If, I mean, you know, I'm sure that Night Nurse, you know, was in the uh, comics. So that's right. The, uh, right you right. know, it's so yeah. I mean, the fact that it was wrapped up like that, uh, you know, it's probably one of those situations where it's like, you know, once they're there, what are you gonna do? You know, what she's saying you got to go back and you know you can have an episode where you knock her into a fish but you know then presumably there they had to come up with an excuse of why she didn't just come right back right um you know oh two more paperwork i guess as you mentioned it um you know i'd be i'd be happy with them not coming back like oh we did it we solved that problem all right so the only thing we have to worry about is death i mean i'd be cool with that but i don't i doubt it uh i think i think yeah, the I, is a thing. i i would want them to make more out of it if they're going to show all that. Right, it's a good point. But at this point, you've you've committed. I, I just yeah yeah okay yeah, yeah. I hear you. You I want to you. have things introduced just to drop them, you know. Um, we do get a bit of our hero's motivations 
in this. Yeah, um, yeah. So we get like Edwin's reasoning for helping lost souls. Right. Uh, is that he hopes that his good deeds are considered when he's inevitably captured and sent back to hell. Right. right? I think that's his idea. It's like, look, yeah, ah, I'll look at my works. And Charles's reasoning for helping souls, I think, is uh, we, we we get a little bit of that after he's tortured with his past. Uh, which, by the way, so he was his hypothermia bodily injury was he was in freezing water being pelted with stones right. by like fellow classmates or somebody. Yeah, like he was yeah. he was like protecting another student from them, and then they decided to kill him. I don't. Anyway, <laughs> that's a that's a tough school. But um, so. But it seems like uh, helping these lost souls using the detective agency is what gives him purpose. Like, uh, he lived an abused life that was violently cut short at age 16. Sure, right. And he, he in that flashback, when he's being uh, beaten, he, you know, he keeps like, like, oh, I'll be good, I'll be better, or whatever. He keeps right, saying, I'll right, be good. Right. Yeah, and yeah. so I, I feel like he thought that if he was somehow a better person, that he could hmm. somehow t- change his circumstance, hmm. but he couldn't. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, certainly one thing they're setting up is the relationship with his father and how yeah. difficult that is. So I wouldn't be surprised if we saw him. Although, interestingly, uh, you know, they started to introduce the concept of Crystal's mother. Um, right. But then it was just a, it was just a scam that was, you know, but... Yeah, uh, well, I, I mean, it's a, it's a uh, yearning for something, fill in the blank... Right. I yearn for my mom. Yeah, so it's a, it's a says, legit yearning. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Just... But I wonder if that's not a, you know, Chekhov's mom or something. Uh, no, I think uh, she'll definitely get her memory back. Right. I think that's that's a foregone conclusion. Before the end of the oh, season. Oh, sure. But she'll will get, her yeah. mother appear is what I'm saying. So. Oh, okay. Okay. I see what you mean. Yeah. Is her mother, has her mother died, for instance, and she just has a or, memory. Or, you know, you, we get ghosts, you yep. know. I know what you're talking about, ghosts. Yeah, so (laughs) we could see her ghost or maybe not. Um, I mean, obviously the uh, ex is is a big one. And and to me, they haven't made me want to see that resolved, actually. I mean, the fact that, you know, it's a threat, you know, okay, that's, that's a part of her past and part of what she's having to deal with. But they haven't made me especially, um, I don't know. The actor's not doing a bad job, but I think it's David the Demon. I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That guy. I don't know. Uh, they haven't convinced me yet that that's a, a great. Uh, I guess the of... the interesting part of that is that she uh, she accepted him. That uh, she had some some say in the matter and decided that she, you know she made a choice. And uh, so it's anyway. It's a kind of interesting little character trait of her. I mean, it, that was it was interesting to see like her sort of realize that you know there was a lot of uh, damaging uh, behavior that was a part of their relationship. Yeah, yeah. So that was interesting to see, and and so yeah, if they can you know do it suggests that maybe it her past more... is not all wine and right roses right yeah she yeah. yeah when she gets her memory back it might be uh some sort of total recall thing or right um, right you know like wow i'm really not such a great person i'm not such a great person right exactly yeah, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. So, so that could be where that's headed um but just to finish off the thought about charles i feel like maybe he thinks that he needs the successes of the detective agency to prove to himself that he's a good mm. person and deserving of happiness. I could think be. maybe that's where it's coming. Because that's could one be. of the things he's so upset about this Devlin family because it's happening and he can't stop it. And he's right. like, and so he feels helpless in that moment. And anyway, so just as a little off topic, but Mr. Devlin, uh, in that is a, uh, he's a psychological type, uh, the family annihilator. Oh, okay. Um, it's a psychological profile for a type of killer. Sure. Um, they're typically control freaks, and when they mm-hmm. see their control slipping with the family, for whatever reason it is, right. Uh, right. they decide to end the family. Um, and, of course, in this situation, Devlin commits suicide, but a fair number of actual family annihilators don't. Oh. Like they, they end up, they'll kill their family and then go on the run and try to start oh. a new life. Ah, and, interesting. And it happens. It, it, and sure. Sometimes successfully. In fact... Uh, again, I've, I've, it's going off track a little bit. But if you want to see yeah. the creepiest real-life family annihilator story, it's also on Netflix. 
It's Netflix's Unsolved Mysteries, Season 1, Episode 3, House of Terror. It's okay. about this DuPont family in France. The father shot the family and the dogs. He buried them under the house. He made an elaborate ruse to buy himself some time, and he took off, and he's still at large. Mm -hmm. And in fact, one of the many unconfirmed, uh, probably wrong sightings of him uh, was right here in Chicago. But oh anyway. wow, okay. Uh, it's just like an it's it is a it's an insane story, yeah. and it's uh, anyway. So it's just one of those like real life can be uh, can, as weird as a, a horror story. Yeah, well, that was an interesting uh, aspect of it, the whole the fact that he was videotaping it and the fact that it lived Yeah, he had a secret room that, where he was watching yeah, his family. Yeah, yeah. That, was, that was actually very interesting. Yeah, yeah. But that kind of, that type of person exists, I'll just yeah, say that. Yeah. Oh, sure. Which is, uh, yeah, creepy to consider. Oh, here's an interesting question I got for you. Okay, we've got this giant anglerfish sea monster, I think yeah. Angie. Uh, lures people to their deaths by filling them with this yearning and letting them fill in the blanks for who the union is for. Uh, yes. Crystal seems... It seems like any living human who gets close enough, including Crystal, is, like, affected. So, sure. why isn't Nico affected? Oh, yeah, I don't know. That's a good question. Okay. Is yeah. there a reason for that, or they're just like, ah, we just didn't want to have her affected? Or is there, like, an actual in I'm inclined to reason? believe that it's the second thing, that they just didn't want to make it come too <laughs> complex. Okay. You know. That's Fair my enough. opinion. I mean, you know, okay. I mean, maybe it's more, but uh, be surprised uh, since they didn't even mention it. You know, it's not like they had a moment where she was like, "Huh, I'm not being affected." You know, they certainly <laughs> had in the previous episode the whole thing about her not, you know, being too afraid to go, and then she goes, and you know, it's too late or whatever. So yeah. the fact that the next episode, when uh, she could have, a, you know, some aspect of yearning, and at the very end of the episode, you see that she's, you know, talking about her mom and everything. Yeah. Yeah. It seems more like an oversight to me than uh, okay. something that's deliberate. Okay. Or, you Fair know, enough. they're just like, you know, we're going to stick it in because... You yeah, know, maybe really maybe the anglerfish doesn't affect everyone. It's just uh, mm. most, I don't know, whatever. I hit my quota for the day. I don't need to take any more. Um, speaking of uh, like quotas and numbers, Edwin's guess was 142 cats. Yeah, come on now. I'm with the cat king on that one. Like that is a horrible <laughs> guess. <laughs> um, I mean, it's wrong by degrees of magnitude. Uh, as someone who's not a cat person, I was like, I you. you know, hey, <laughs> you know, no, it's like I actually looked it up. Um, obviously, Chicago is infinitely larger than this town they're in in Washington. But here in Chicago, there are hundreds and hundreds of thousands of stray cats. That's stray cats, much less ones that uh, have homes. So right. I would, you'd have so, to add some zeros. Yeah, I wonder. So I don't think he... Uh, I don't think it's confined to strays, I feel like. Right. It's any cat. But yeah. I'm just saying, so you're probably talking, I would guess, in a town that like tens of thousands of cats. Mm. Ah, Probably. Okay. Yeah, so okay. 142 just seems see. like <laughs> woefully low. But anyway, I don't, who am I? I'm not the cat king. No, um, you're not. You're merely like a cat duke or a cat, you <laughs> that's know. That's right. A cat, cat regent. Viceroy. Yeah. <laughs> um, but, I again, this is another one of those, like, plot lines. So you've got the death as opposed to the night nurse. I would prefer the death plot line. Um, Edwin and his possible relationships... You've got the Cat King and right. uh, Monty the Crow. Um, I'm more interested... But he also has a bit of longing for Charles, too. Oh, for, certainly for Charles. I'm, yes, that is... And I, that's the most compelling and the fact plot that line that of we, all. Uh, yeah, I think it was, in, again, in the Doom Patrol where Edwin was able to uh, profess his affection yeah. for okay. Well, I think Charles that's coming. I do show. think that's coming. Yeah, probably in the, uh, in the comics, I assume. Interesting. Here, we did get... I think it was fairly clear that everyone realizes that Edwin is gay. Sure. Right. So I, I wasn't sure if, if, if he was hiding that information or not, but it seems like, no, he's, I, I think people are like, oh, we want you to be with Monty or, or we don't or whatever. But like people, uh, the, the friends all seem like, uh, right. But they're, but I, I think, you know, they are making a point that he, uh, 
certainly probably hasn't expressed or followed that interest before. I mean, yeah. they haven't said it, but it just does seem that way. Um, and he is an older character. Right. Um, so, yeah, from a different time. You know, I'm sure they're going to, you know, we're going to see more of uh, the flashback to him. At least I would assume right. we would. Right, Where we see that that's the basis for him being bullied is, uh, you know, that's how absolutely. different he is. Yeah. In that context, if I had to choose one again, I would prefer the maybe the Edwin Cat King relationship because at least the Cat King seems to legitimately be interested in Edwin as opposed to the Monty. It's like with the Monty thing, it's like, will Edwin get fooled by Monty yeah, and, yeah, and get yeah, led yeah, into yeah, a yeah, trap? Yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. like, I, so I assume Monty's being false this whole Maybe Monty isn't being false, but it feels like Monty's being false because he's being controlled by the witch. So I'm like, I'm just kind of annoyed by the antics. Like, either fall for the act or don't. Let's move on. I don't know. Like, let's, let's, let's resolve hmm. that. But anyway. Well, I mean, the part that we haven't seen is, uh, you know, how Monty feels about being a pet. And then, you True. know, now having a life, you know, that Right. What Monty... kind of uh, control does Monty have? Like, usually when you think of a witch or a wizard's familiar, right. yeah. you think of a creature that's pretty much, like, under the control of that of the witch, so I'm right. I'm thinking of it as Esther has a lot of control over Monty, but maybe that's not true. And if that's not true, then I, I take it back. But in my yeah, head, I mean, like, it, it would surprise me if they didn't. You know, as much as we're seeing of of this character, that he doesn't ultimately okay. All right. find you know his, some some agency. kind of autonomy. Yeah, okay. Yeah, right. yeah. I you All know, right. if maybe not, the then if not, then I'd say it's bad writing. Yeah, agreed. You know, agreed. it's okay, like, all right. why have a character that can uh, have some emotions against something like that and not do it? You know, just, okay, no, I'm just mildly following what you're saying. In other words, it's not so much, uh, I mean, it is possibly Monty's effect on Edwin, but it's more about Edwin and company's effect on Monty. It that could be. They're going to take him from, I'm a, a servant of a witch to, hey, I have my own... Uh, yeah, as you say, my own agency, perhaps. Yeah, the argument against that is that you might think of that as trite, um, but then if it's merely that he's just a mindless agent, you know, it doesn't feel guilty for right. what he's That's doing. That's what I don't want. I just yeah. like you're yeah. spending way too much time if right. he's just uh, a pawn. I'm like, right. okay, yeah. move on. It would okay. be a surprise if they didn't. Okay. You know, with as much time as they're spending on it. Otherwise, it's really not a very dramatic payoff. Yeah. I mean, it's interesting the fact that. Um, they're taking their time with Esther, you know. Right. That, they really uh, took, she took a back seat for these two episodes, big time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, so, to the point where you could argue that, uh, you know, the night nurse, maybe they rushed that too. Um, mm -hmm. You know, and maybe they really needed to uh, to establish more about that character other than you know just being mean to the people around that are you know trying right. to help them find it's, them. Yeah, she's mean to the little kids. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so we agree that it's a, it's an improvement yeah. uh, over episodes one and two. Uh, mm. That's a good trend. And if we uh, as we hit five and six, who knows? Boom. We're going to get uh, even better. Um, also, we did hear uh, the Lazarus Project season two uh, nice. will be coming along in June, uh, as will the Acolyte, uh, which mm. had a, a new trailer drop. Um, and we got awesome news. We don't know when this is happening, but we know it's in 2024. Uh, yeah. That Severance season yeah. two, yeah, quality is back, TV. and that's woohoo! Yeah. I mean, we we were huge yeah, yeah, fans yeah. of Severance. Yeah, yeah. That was yeah. the best thing we saw of that, whatever year that was. It's yeah. You know, I feel like it was two years ago now. It was 25 years ago, Paul. No, okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> it was a while back, but anyway, that show was amazing, mm. and we're really looking forward to this. Uh, covering that when it comes out in the near future. So, um, anyway, we'll be back talking about The Dead Boy Detectives, episodes five and six. Thank you, as always, Paul. Appreciate oh, it, sure. good sir. No problem. And we'll talk to everybody next time. Bye! Hang on just a second because uh, I have my own cat issue. My cat uh, king okay. is meowing <laughs> to get into another room. Hang on.